Okay, let's try another one. Okay, this time the coefficient, or sorry, this time the equation was given to you, um, and my software doesn't handle subscripts very well, so we're just going to have to talk through this. <clears throat> we know that we've got um, calcium hydride, this is this CaH2 here, um, reacting with water to make calcium hydroxide and hydrogen gas. Okay, so before anything happens, I know that I have no moles of product. Okay, I can safely say that because nothing has happened. There are no moles made because nothing has reacted yet. And the problem says um, that I want to take 2.5 moles of calcium hydride. So before I start, I know that I'm going to begin with 2.5 moles of this stuff, right? Um, and it doesn't tell me anything about the amount of water that I have. So let's assume that I have a ton of it. I've got gallons of water. It's in excess. I want to get rid of all my calcium hydride, so I'm going to subtract out 2.5 moles and leave myself with zero moles. Okay. And the question says, how many moles of hydrogen gas will be produced? So I'm actually looking for my answer over here, how much hydrogen. So let's change colors and let's do a ratio. I know that for every one of the calcium hydride, I'm going to make two moles of hydrogen gas. So one calcium hydride is two H2s and I know that I have 2.5 moles of the calcium hydride and I'm trying to figure out how many moles of hydrogen I'm going to make. If we cross multiply, I'm going to get that I will need 5 moles of hydrogen gas, or I'm going to create 5 moles. So I'm going to add 5.0 moles, and I started with 0 moles, so I'm going to wind up with 5.0 moles of hydrogen gas. Now, remember last time I said if the compounds have the same coefficient, they'll have the same number of moles either created or destroyed or used up, sorry, not destroyed, but used up. And in this one, we see that the hydrogen gas here has a coefficient that is two times bigger than the calcium hydride. So if you look, I started out using up 2.5 moles, but I created twice that amount, and I created five moles. Why is that? Because for every one calcium hydride, I create two hydrogen gas. Now, does that violate the law of conservation of mass? No, it doesn't, actually. Where is the extra hydrogen coming from? It's not coming from the hydride part. It's actually being stripped out of the water. So these two are combining over here to give me my two moles, like so. Okay, let's try another one. This time I'm told that I'm going to take benzene, C6H6, and I'm going to react it with some oxygen to make carbon dioxide and water. Um, it's a nice, easy combustion reaction. It's already balanced, and again, the subscripts didn't get subscripted, so I'm sorry about that, but we'll work through it. So before, I know that I have no product. So I'm going to start with zero moles and zero moles. No products before. Okay. And then I read the problem, and it says I'm going to begin with 0.45 moles of oxygen. So I can put in my 0.45 moles. Um, and since it doesn't tell me how much of the C6H6 that I have, I'm just going to assume that I have a lot of it. Okay. Later on, we're not going to make that assumption anymore, and the problems are going to get harder. But for now, we're going to assume we have a lot. I want to use up all that oxygen that they gave me, so I'm going to subtract my 0.45 moles, and I'm going to be left with zero moles. Okay. And the question says, how many moles of water am I going to produce? So I want to know the answer over here. How many moles of water will I make if I use up 0.45 moles of oxygen gas? So let's do our ratios. Our ratios are that 15 oxygen gas molecules are going to create six water molecules. So 15 O2s will make six H2Os right? And 
I know that I have 0.45 moles of O2, and I want to know how many moles of water I can actually create. So I'm going to cross multiply, and when I do that math, I'm going to wind up getting a really crazy number. Oh, got it. Zero. 0.18 moles. Okay, now can I look at it like I did last time and say, ooh, if I multiply 15 by, uh, it's not going to work. Okay, once we get into this, you're not going to be able to just look at the coefficients and know what the answer is. We're going to actually have to do the math by doing the cross multiplication. So if I started with zero moles and I wind up with 0.81 moles being created, then I'm left with 0 0.18 moles of water. Okay, but let's go one step further and try and figure out how much benzene would I have actually used up. And I'm going to do this in a way you probably wouldn't expect. I'm going to use this 6 right here and figure out how much benzene the C6H6 could I have used up in the process. Now 6 and 2 have a nice easy ratio. The 6 is three times larger than the 2. So I can do this in my head and actually say, well, if, if I have a 6 is the 2 ratio, so 6 is the 2, or 6H2O is the 2C6H6, and I know that I have 0.18 moles. How many moles of C6H6 can I make? So we'll cross multiply again, we'll get 6X equals uh, 0.36. And if you do that on your calculator, you're going to find out that you are going to need point, um, zero 0.06, sorry, point zero 0.06 moles. And why is it negative? Because I'm using it up. Okay, so I'm going to use up point zero 0.06 moles of benzene, and I'm going to be left with a ton. Remember, you're subtracting a little bit from a whole bunch. Now again, 2 times 3 is going to give me my 6. So if I multiply my 2 times 3 to get the 6, then I can also take my 0 0.06 and multiply by 3, and 0 0.06 times 3 gives me 0.18. So you don't always have to use the information that you were given in the beginning, because all of these ratios will work equally. Okay. So if I asked you how many moles of carbon dioxide would you create, well, you know you have this 6 here, and you have a 12 for carbon dioxide. Well, 6 is half of 12, so if I took 0.18, I'd need 0.36 moles of carbon dioxide would be created in this because 12 is to 0.36 as 6 is to 0.18. Or in other words, 12 is twice the amount of 6, so twice 0.18 is 0.36. Good luck. 